Let's learn about the integumentary system. The integument is the largest organ in the body and has a variety of functions. These include protection from the environment, housing nervous system sensory receptors, excreting waste products, synthesizing chemicals such as vitamin D, and temperature regulation. Let's look at the integument or skin in more detail. The skin consists of three main layers. These are the epidermis, the dermis, and the hypodermis or subcutaneous layer. The epidermis consists of stratified squamous epithelium. The dermis consists of connective tissue. Let's look at the epidermis in more detail. The epidermis is arranged in sections called strata. The stratum corneum is the most superficial layer of the epidermis. It consists of hardened cells that have been hardened with keratin. Keratin is secreted by cells located in the deep layers of the epidermis called keratinocytes. The stratum lucidum is an additional layer that is found only in the palms of the hands and the soles of the feet. It provides added thickness to these layers. The stratum granulosum contains cells that have lost their nuclei. These cells remain active and secrete keratin. The stratum spinosum contains cells called prickle cells. These cells have small radiating processes that connect with other cells. Keratin is synthesized in this layer. The stratum basale or basal cell layer contains epidermal stem cells. This is the deepest layer of the epidermis. It consists of one layer of cells that divide and begin their migration to the superficial layers. This is the layer where basal cell cancer develops. Let's look at the dermis in more detail. The dermis contains connective tissue. The border between the epidermis and dermis contains undulations called dermal papillae. There are a lot of structures in the dermis. These include hair follicles that contain sebaceous glands and erector pili muscles, nerve fibers containing sensory receptors, sweat glands, and Pacinian corpuscles, a type of sensory receptor. Hair is produced by hair follicles. Hair is not alive and develops from old dead cells that are pushed outward by new cells. The cells contain keratin for hardness and melanin for color. Hairs can be very sensitive. This is due to a tiny plexus of nerves that surround each hair follicle. Hair is so sensitive that you can feel the movement of even a single hair. A band of smooth muscle is connected to each hair follicle. This structure is called an erector pili muscle and is capable of moving each follicle, causing it to stand up in times of sympathetic nervous system activity, such as emotional stress. Hair begins to grow at the base of the hair follicle in a structure called the hair bulb. The hair bulb is surrounded by a hair papilla that contains blood vessels and nerves. The cells of the hair bulb divide and push the cells toward the surface, along the hair root and shaft. A small gland surrounds each hair follicle. This gland is called a sebaceous gland. The sebaceous glands secrete an oily substance known as sebum. The substance is secreted in response to contraction of the erector pili muscle. Sebum contains triglyceride, protein, cholesterol, and some electrolytes. Sebum makes the hair more flexible and hydrated. Sweat glands, or sudoriferous glands, are also located in the dermis. There are two types of sweat glands. Apocrine sweat glands secrete their substances into the hair follicles. The secretions of apocrine glands can develop an odor. 
the odor can increase because the secretion acts as a nutrient for bacteria that enhance the odor. Apocrine glands begin to secrete substances at puberty and are located in the axilla and genital regions. Eccrine sweat glands secrete their substances directly onto the surface of the skin. They are coiled tubular glands that secrete a substance that mostly consists of water with a trace of some electrolytes and a peptide with antibiotic properties. The eccrine sweat glands' primary function is to help regulate body temperature. The sweat can evaporate and carry away heat. The sweat also excretes water and electrolytes. Let's look at the hypodermis in more detail. The hypodermis consists of connective tissue and adipose tissue, along with blood vessels and nerves. The skin also helps to synthesize vitamin D. Vitamin D, or cholecalciferol, is synthesized when a precursor molecule, known as 7-dehydrocholesterol, absorbs ultraviolet radiation. This molecule then travels to the liver and kidney where it is converted to the active form of vitamin D, which is 1,25-hydroxycholecalciferol. Vitamin D is an important substance in the body. It functions to help the body absorb calcium. It also helps with calcium transport in the intestines. We hope you've learned something about the integumentary system. And see you next time!